interesting. <laughs> so, welcome back to another video, and you join me at the halfway point in my journey to the Highlands of Scotland. So if I get my phone out, I'll just show you where I've come from. I've come from the very southwest tip of Wales, and we've traveled all the way through Wales, all the way through England, and we're just across the border now into Scotland at this charming little B&B, &B, which is my home for the night. Now, tomorrow I'm gonna to be heading up right round the top side of Scotland to the Northern Highlands, Torridon to be exact. And I'm hoping to get there in time to shoot the sunset. And then we're gonna be out for the whole of the following day, capturing the raw beauty of the Scottish Highlands. So I just cannot wait to see what the next couple of days brings. So I'm gonna get my head down now, get a bit of rest and join me a bit further on into the journey tomorrow, where hopefully we'll get some good light and some good conditions. Let's go. Oh, what a journey, absolutely spectacular. I'm so thrilled to be here. So last night went quite smooth. I had a really nice sleep actually, despite the million different shades of metallic crushed velvet. But uh, the hosts were absolutely lovely and I've booked in to stay there on the way back down as well, as it was only 30 pounds a night. So absolutely brilliant, really. Can't argue with that, can you? So I'm in this little Glen Valley I've got no idea where I'm going. I've not done any planning whatsoever, which is unusual for me. And yeah, I'm just going to suck it and see. I've seen some really nice old twisted pines down by a river as I was driving past. So I thought I'd stop and see what presents itself. I've been clambering over these rocks here, nearly getting wet feet, trying to piece together a composition to make this pine tree work with the backdrop that we've got. And I think I've got something finally sorted. Now, it's going to be tricky to film because I've literally got to clamber back across there with the tripod and whatnot. But let me explain what I'm going for and uh, yeah, hopefully it makes sense. So basically, we've got a lot of grey sky right now. So I don't want to include too much of the sky and there's not a lot of light either. So what I'm trying to do is uh, use the water flow to uh, show light in the image because obviously the water has got a reflective surface. So that's going to allow us to see some light in the foreground. And I'm going to allow those water flows just to run through and lead the eye into the scene, which is really the pine tree here on the left hand side. But also just beneath that, we've got a snowy peak and this wonderful mountain on the right hand side as well. And it's been quite difficult to actually find a composition that works because quite often the branches of the overhanging pine would encroach into the mountain. I wanted there just to be a little bit of breathing space between the, the branches. And I also wanted to see that snowy peak and get something decent in the foreground. So yeah, just being really careful not to fall in. These rocks are so slippy. I've got myself framed up quite low down, like you can see, just skimming underneath that pine tree. Got the three stop filter on, which is slowing the water down to about a fifth of a second. So just showing some movement as the water flows through our foreground. And yeah, F11 gets everything nice and sharp. Before I go ahead and press the shutter button, I just wanted to take a moment to thank each and every one of you. Every little bit of encouragement that you give me, every like, every comment, every minute that you watch these videos, it really does mean a lot. And this is why we're here today in Scotland shooting landscapes like this. It's because of you guys. So I just want to thank you so much. Without you guys, this just wouldn't be possible. I just wouldn't be able to share moments like this. So yeah, we're having a bit of a moment, <laughs> but yeah. Thanks so much guys, honestly, thank you so much. That was a uh, bit of a risky first shot, I think, actually. Anything could have happened there. I could have slipped over on the rock, so the tripod could have gone over, and that could have been the end of my photography for the whole trip, so yeah. But I was having a proper moment there and I just wanted to say how grateful I am, you know, to be out here shooting these landscapes. I don't take it for granted. Um, yeah, just thanks again, guys. 
I don't know this area at all. And like I mentioned earlier, I've done no planning whatsoever. But fortunately, we're meeting up with somebody that does know the area a little better than me. All will be revealed in the morning though. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I can't wait for, for what tomorrow will bring. And hopefully the forecast is for good light. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. My good friend and fellow landscape photographer Henry Turner and I had rented this charming little cottage for the week right in the heart of the North West Highlands and after yesterday's taster I just couldn't wait to get into today's photography. So welcome back to day three and what a spectacular landscape this is, absolutely incredible. Now we actually came here to photograph some cascades with these mountains in the backdrop but there's very little water flowing through the river here which is a bit disappointing so I've come a little bit further up I've got these dead grasses, this wonderful heather in the foreground that I'm trying to use. These grasses are a very very light yellow colour so it's quite interesting. I think they contrast well with the mountains in the background. Very moody skies right now so I'm hoping to piece together a few different elements here in the foreground to see if I can make a compelling image. And I was just saying to Henry you know sometimes when you rock up at a location like this you've got a preconceived idea in your mind haven't you? We come to shoot the cascades and it doesn't happen. Sometimes you've just got to be you know, quick to adapt and move on and see if you can come up with something else and hopefully that's what I've done here. I don't think it's going to be quite as good as what I initially thought we'd get out of this location but it's still a photo and that's the most important thing and just being here as well is truly amazing. So yeah, what a beautiful place. These mountains are so dramatic, just fantastic. We are at 30th of a second, ISO 125. I'm not really sure about that last shot there. I tried to make it work with the foreground. I quite like the colours, but I'm not really sure it worked. But I'm going to go and try down by the stream. Now, this stream is a controlled stream, so sometimes there's a lot of water flowing through it, other times none at all. And it seems like we've just timed it wrongly, if you like. But I'm going to give it a go anyway, see if we can make it work. Maybe try and get the camera up close to the water and see if there's an image to be had. It'd be nice to give it a go at least. But what a beautiful, beautiful area. Wow, absolutely stunning. So I set up on this little rock ledge here, which is quite precarious to say the least. We've got this water flow here. I'm not quite close to it because we don't have a lot of water coming down this cascade here. The closer you get, the more it accentuates that water flow. And that's exactly what I'm going for here. We've got some wonderful light on the mountain there, but beyond this cascade, it looks absolutely beautiful. A couple of issues I do have. It's a really a case of getting the light in the right place. Sometimes the light comes right across the right hand side of my foreground and that casts a real harsh shadow across my foreground which looks dreadful. So every now and again when the light becomes diffused by cloud in the foreground it's a lot easier to manage. So I'm really just after light on the background and no light on my foreground and just allowing the reflections in the water really to carry the eye through the scene to the mountain beyond. I think it works quite well. The other issue I do have is a bridge to my left hand side here and we can just see a little bit of the bridge in the left hand side of the frame which is a little bit unfortunate. I've got a circular polarizer on and a three stop filter which has given me a third of a second at f11 which just shows some motion a movement in the water. Yeah actually I'm yeah, quite pleased with this shot. Much better than uh, shooting up on the top there I think at this stage. So yeah looking forward to post processing this. Once we're finished up here we're going to be heading to the Isle of Skye which I just can't wait, somewhere I've wanted to shoot for so long and I just can't wait to get there and see what that offers so I'm taking a little trip out there this evening to hopefully shoot an amazing sunset who knows what we'll get though but yeah, can't wait, it's going to be a cracking afternoon and evening of Tulpe I'm absolutely sure of that just buzzing right now to be here, it's just incredible So if you're new to Scotland like me or you're planning to visit Scotland and you're looking for some photography inspiration, I highly recommend checking out 
Henry's ebook. It's a location guide, all of his favourite locations that he's been to and visited before. It's well worth a look and I highly recommend it. And I'll leave a link for that down in the video description if you fancy checking it out and help to support his channel too. After making our way across the iconic Isle of Skye Ridge, we finally made it to Elgol. Conditions are looking pretty dramatic to say the least. Some really thick low level cloud that's cascading over the top of these mountain peaks which looks so dramatic. Incredible light rays going on behind me. Absolutely wonderful. So I'm really excited about what this evening will bring. <sighs> what a stunning place. There's Henry look down there ahead of me, ahead of the game. It's taken me quite a while to find a composition and that's mainly because the foreground I've found can be a little bit too distracting sometimes. So I've actually elevated my tripod to about a metre or so, just taking a step back from my foreground and that's allowing me to see straight across the sea here and really focus on the backdrop because I want to show you the scale and the grandeur of those wonderful mountains behind. But yeah, these mountains are absolutely fantastic and the light is just pouring through now and catching the side of the cloud, which is absolutely amazing. And what I've decided to do is go for a long exposure here of four minutes. So F11, I've got the 10 stop filter on, four minute exposure, smoothing that water out and that's just allowing the mid-ground to calm down a little bit, otherwise it's just a little bit too texture heavy, I've found. I think this is the best that I can come up with at the minute, and I think I'm just going to leave the camera on the tripod and shoot this over the course of the next 10 or 15 minutes or so. After taking that last shot, I quickly moved and took this image, which I think I prefer. So guys, I do hope you enjoyed this Scottish landscape photography adventure. It was great to catch up with Henry again. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to check out the one that's at the top there. It's a similar kind of video that I'm sure you'll enjoy. Why not check out my ebook too, which is linked up there and also down in the description. Anyway, guys, hope to see you all again next week. Take care. See you soon.